Hello, Rich Evans, and welcome to Review. Hello, Mike. And today on Review, we're doing Gremlins 2. No, the we're not. What? We're not. I tricked you. But the poster shows Gremlins 2. Oh. You see that? It's a cast portrait of Star Trek The Next Generation. I thought that was a real poster, but apparently it's a digital effect. This is the first review for something that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it, Johnny. <laughs> well, Rich, uh, big news came out recently. I think it happened at the, the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas in, in August. Patrick Stewart walked out of a hastily put together holodeck door. Okay. And came out on stage and everyone clapped. And then he awkwardly announced that they're making a Picard TV show. Jean-Luc Picard is back. He's coming back, and, and there might be more information on this on the internet. It, it might be speculation, I don't know. We're going at this cold. Maybe they just signed him, mm -hmm. and then it's now it's uh, the, wide open as to what they're gonna do. Um, we don't know, we haven't looked into this at all. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, Patrick Stewart is coming back as Picard. This is my dream come true. <laughs> and it's also my worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, and I'm thinking, what are they gonna do? Well, it's got the Star Trek name on it, so it's probably gonna be some kind of bland action schlock. That's what I was thinking. And then I thought, what would I wanna see? I just started typing a bunch of stuff. You could call it a treatment, but I just started typing ideas of what I would wanna see in a Captain Picard TV show. And they didn't really say like, you know, the, the rest of the cast of TNG is coming back. It's not yeah. like a, because the revival series are big, right? So I thought, well, what are they going to do? So I wrote up a treatment. This is a man who loves Star Trek. Just for fun and with no hope of him doing anything with it, he writes his own treatment for the next Star Trek series. Oh, Rich, nerds do this shit all the time. Here's my pitch for the Captain Picard TV show. Oh, I'm sitting on it. <laughs> so the show would be called Star Trek Galaxy. The series would open at the Picard family vineyard, the exact same sequence as seen in All Good Things, the final episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. That's a, that's a damn poetic idea. You know, you, you, you start right where it should have ended, you know, 30 years ago. I like that. Uh, Picard would have a beard, the same straw hat, dressed exactly the same, tending to the vines in retirement. Except this time, he no longer has Eremotic Syndrome. Maybe we could have some kind of fun line like, it was cured by some holographic doctor. Close to 25 years. 25 years. Time-wise, it roughly matches up 20, 25 years, which would be neat because both actors have aged pretty close to how they look now. I'm talking about LeVar Burton and Patrick Stewart, of course. The premise would be a little different. It would mix both concepts of a fully crewed up starship just going about the day-to-day -day business of the Federation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. What have we got today? With a series or season long story arc. So Jordy LaForge shows up to talk to now retired Admiral Picard about reinstating him for a brief mission. The famed USS Galaxy, the namesake for the ship class, had vanished at the end of the Dominion War and was listed MIA, has now mysteriously resurfaced somewhere strange. Side note, I have no idea what happened to this ship in canon. Currently, it's listed as active on the Star Trek Wikipedia, but who cares? Oh, yeah. The ship is crewless and drifting somewhere near the Gamma Quadrant, possibly near the territory of a new Federation enemy. Not that the 30-year-old Federation technology would be much of a prize to any belligerent race, but the ship might hold some clues to what happened, and maybe even some of the crew are still on board. Jordy, along with his wife, Dr. Leah Brahms, and possibly their children, Alondra, Brett, and Sydney, all mentioned in All Good Things, are traveling to the derelict ship to investigate. Leah was the designer of the Enterprise D, and Jordy was, of course, the chief engineer, so they are essentially the experts on this type of ship. LaForge said he would feel more comfortable if an admiral was there to oversee the mission, as he's not a fan of the eager, reckless young captain they currently have leading the mission to recover the ship. Perhaps he's also a bit concerned with Picard. Maybe he's becoming more withdrawn after the death of his wife. Anyway, 
Along with a skeleton crew, possibly of cadets, they investigate this mystery, which ends up having far larger and more dangerous consequences for the Federation, of course. The barely working Galaxy-class ship finds itself in a combat situation brought on by the young, inexperienced captain, which ultimately gets him killed. Picard is then forced to take command of the ship. Perhaps even the warp drive is so critically damaged that they can only travel at impulse through one dangerous situation after another. This would force Picard to use his tried and true diplomacy and wit to help them all survive and solve whatever mystery is at hand. As far as fan service and callbacks, fans love the Galaxy-class ship. The main cast would be Picard, LaForge, and Brahms, along with newcomers and a skeleton crew. The whole mission would start as a dull recovery operation, but turn into a season-long adventure with a Starfleet legend, Picard. We're talking about the Captain Picard TV show. And right. you have two options here. And this is, this is what got my brain going on this, right? Yeah. Because your two options are this. Patrick Stewart is 78 years old. Yes. Option one, the Enterprise X, <laughs> I don't know, is a new super sleek, gigantic battleship. Yeah. We need a captain who has experience. Get a 78 year old man, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, the Klingons are starting another war. The world is changing. <laughs> We have a full-scale invasion of the Federation by the Klingons, the Romulans, and the Borg. And uh, uh, you know, that's that's option one. That's what they're gonna go with. <laughs> but if that's what we're making. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about your fake Picard show we're, that they're not going to make. I know they're not gonna make it, but we could we could dream, <laughs> can't we? Listen, <laughs> yes, we can. No, no, no. This this. this no, is, yes, we can dream. I agree with you. Your options are one, put him in the captain's chair and just ignore his age and have him say fire, fire, torpedoes, and have an action series. Option two is him in a retirement home, uh -huh. taking his pills. <laughs> or him like on the streets of, of Paris, like sipping coffee while he reads the newspaper as he should be in reality. I've been away far too long. And, and you know what else annoys me too? They get the Millennium Falcon back in numerous incarnations, from brand new to the old rust bucket. But by they, you mean Star Wars fans. Yes. Okay. We get uh, Discovery, a spinning ship that travels on a, a, a network of spores. And then we get the Enterprise-E, which, yeah. is, which is an ugly, ugly monstrosity. Fans love the Galaxy-class ship. It's, it's revered as yes. much as the Constitution class. They took the Enterprise D and they trashed it in Star Trek Generations, which I am still bitter about 25 years later. Yeah. Why can't we get the Galaxy class back? I'm agreeing with you about everything. I, I like this idea. I actually like this idea. You, take, you, you get the Galaxy class back, but you make it a little bit run down. It's been beat up. Oh yeah. That's, it's, it's been through some shit. That's, and that's, that's the different angle that, of course, they won't take. They're gonna want sleek sets, uh, you know, holographic projections. Dis Discovery looks as TNG would look 20 years later, yeah. in my opinion. Then you, you also get, the sh you get that ship back, but it also doesn't have to feel the same, because at the time in TNG, the, the Galaxy class, it's a fucking luxury cruise ship. Mm but you get the rundown version of that now. So it's still the same ship, but like the inside, it's like beat up, wires are hanging down, panels are missing. I like that idea. Main power is offline. All systems are in standby or emergency mode. The, 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 the clear like thematic thing you want to do, right, is you have the, the young rookie crew because the captain is dead, and then the, the veteran there, Picard, he's gotta be in charge, but he's really old, and are these young kids gonna trust this old man? That's, that's, that's one of the, one of the uh, selling points of the show, yeah. is, is essentially the, the USS Galaxy is, is a metaphor for Picard himself, a relic from another era. What do you do with Geordi? Well, here's the thing, you want an ensemble cast. Yeah. You have Geordi and you have his wife, um, and you have kids, they bring along their kids, because really they're, they're I, and, and it doesn't really say how old they are, um, but I'm gonna imagine they're, maybe one could be in, in 
the service. I, that's fine. And two are maybe a little bit younger. Well, they're not so little anymore. Brett is applying to Starfleet Academy next year. Um, you know, you have, you have a, a whole bunch of options for the kids. One, one, one wants to go and be an artist or something. And, and so you have a, a whole family dynamic that you could have a bunch of stories with in that regard. And maybe Dr. Leah Brahms has no interest in going on this mission, but Jordy really wants to help his old friend, Captain Picard. But my only question is, why aren't the young, experienced crew looking up to Jordy for what to do? Because he's, he's, he's older, but he's not so old that, oh, he's grandpa. Because maybe Jordy just doesn't, Jordy's never had the, the command bug, you know? He's an engineer. This is Captain LaForge of the Starship Challenger. I mean, I know they show him as a captain in um, Star Trek Voyager. I'm okay with that. He, I, do, he does actually command a galaxy class ship in Star Trek Voyager. I'm but just, that's an alternate timeline. I, it's very possible he's settled down. Him and his wife run uh, an engineering school, mm -hmm. you know, okay. some, somewhere in the world, you know. She's just been made director of the Daystrom Institute. And he, he has no interest in space exploration anymore or moving up the ranks in command. They threw him in that uh, Star Trek Voyager episode as a captain because I think he directed that episode. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna remove that from canon. Okay, okay. Um, if you're talking about Riker, yes, they would look to Riker. But Jordy and his wife are just going to be sort of like civilians on this trip, which is why they brought the initial commanding officer. Mm -hmm. Who, who is like, I want nothing to do with this. I wanna, I also, he's a younger guy. Kind of like the situation in Generations when it starts, when you have um, uh, Cameron from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Well, I, th I think if you're gonna kill him off, you may as well make a Mr. Adult Man in charge, but then he's dead and it doesn't really matter. Sure, yeah. sure. But, but the underlying reason is not just like Picard's experience and all that, is that maybe there's some personal stuff going on with Picard and you mentioned revisiting Eromotic Syndrome I, meant, uh, I, I mentioned um, something more personal, like the death of his wife. You could even say yeah. it was Crusher who passed away and he's sort of withdrawn and Jordy's worried about him and he thinks getting him out into space might help, you know, revive him a little. Yeah. Uh, his zest for life again. Because um, he's only 78 and in Star Trek years, he's got another 30 or 40 left. <laughs> right. Remember, Bones lived to a, a 100 and... 28 or something like that. 137 years, Admiral, according to Starfleet records. We didn't see him die. He might still be he, around for all we fucking he, know. He, yeah. What's so damn troublesome about not having died? So after the USS Destroyer gets blown up, they all have to be on the galaxy. I guess you have to have them on, like, the new slick ship at first. Everything's modern and super high-tech. This ship can do anything, and then that has to get blown up. And then, like, the survivors, the skeleton crew, the younger kids, and Picard. They were, like, on the galaxy at the time the disaster happened. We've, 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 the only ship we've got available to us, we made it here. We've got to get onto this old, broken-down, galaxy-class ship. What is the premise? If the idea is to find the galaxy and, and get on it, you don't want them to get stuck. Like, oh, we're stuck in the Gamma Quadrant on the USS Galaxy. We've got to take it back to the, the Alpha Quadrant, to the Federation, because then you have the same premise as Voyager. Yeah. And then you have the logic of, well, if they found the ship, you know, just have a bunch of other ships warp there and tow it back. Mission over. You need some sort of thing that keeps them on board it mm -hmm. and keeps other people away from it but also allows you to do standalone episodes and adventures. And so, so that's really the tough part, is, is why, what is the logic of keeping them all on the ship as this crew? Voyager, it's obvious. In the timeline, what is going on in Star Trek? The last thing that we saw... In the Star Trek online game, the clue... Blah, 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 blah. Sorry. Yes, uh, that's, that's a good note. Uh, your, your bizarre outburst there brought up a good point. There's canon. Uh -huh. There's probably been a hundred books written. Captain Picard and during the Dominion War. Captain Picard after the Dominion War. Uh, it's the Star Trek Online game. Numerous things that probably may or may not be considered canon. Some things are Paramount. Mm -hmm. Some things are CBS. Don't know. All I know is the last time we saw Captain Picard was at the end of Star Trek Nemesis. 
where he was super depressed and everyone was super depressed. <laughs> and that's how they ended Star Trek The Next Generation with everybody depressed. Totally better than all good things. I should have done this a long time ago. You were always welcome. And the sky's the limit. Uh, uh, the the uh, uh, Shinzon, uh -huh. one of Tom Hardy's greatest performances. <laughs> uh, Shinzon uh, betrayed everybody and went insane, and then the Romulans teamed up with Star Trek Enterprise E, and they blew it up Shinzon. And and the Romulan lady said, "Perhaps, Captain Picard, this is a new day between between the Federation and the Romulans." You've earned a friend in the Romulan Empire today, Captain. I hope the first of many. So you left with a glimmer of hope that perhaps the Romulans won't be so adversarial in, in the near future. But Mike, we learned in Star Trek 2009, written by Alex Kurtzman. I had to extract the red matter and shoot it into the supernova. That a, a supernova apparently blew up the entire Romulan empire, which presumably spanned multiple star systems. That black eye is forever there on the prime timeline. I'm going to ignore. Yes! <laughs> Common sense for the win! <laughs> We're ignoring all that. It seemed like the entirety of the Alpha Quadrant towards the ending of Deep Space Nine all got together and said, let's work together and stop the fucking Dominion. So to me, that would seem like perhaps we had a nice span of a few decades of galactic peace. Because you need, here's the, here's the one thing that isn't clearly defined here. The, the season long arc, this is important. I'm curious what you got. I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, it's all very vague right now. But oh, yeah. I'm thinking like you have this old ship, right? No more galaxy classes exist. Mm -hmm. This ship is unique and perhaps it went somewhere. Like kind of like, uh, what, what's that movie? Event Horizon? Yeah. It went somewhere bad and it came back almost like a Trojan horse. Like, like, like the Defiant from the original series. Here's, I'm, I'm, I'm just coming up with a set of nowhere. Every, every now and then, Star Trek mentions like civilizations that used to exist like 30,000 years ago. Maybe you got one of those civilizations that got themselves caught in some kind of time anomaly. Or maybe they were trapped by the other civilizations 30,000 years ago in order to stop them by capturing them in some kind of time anomaly. Okay. But now, 30,000 years later, that's starting to break down. Every now and then, the whole, the whatever pocket dimension they're stuck in opens up. And that's how the galaxy got stuck in there in the first place. And, but that's, that's breaking down and these things are starting to get loose, right? Mm -hmm. and so then you can, you can have the galaxy kind of like lost within these time anomalies and that's why they can't just call for backup. They're popping in and out all over the place, maybe trying to find their way back. But you can have them going to different places and times. Mm. And that's when you can get different adventures. You could throw in an episode if they're popping around different times where we see the Galen planet before it gets destroyed. Maybe Picard gets to visit that planet. That'd be neat. Okay, so instead of instead of distance like Voyager, yeah. it's time. Yes. All right, Rich Evans. That's why you get paid the big bucks. <laughs> to, to come up with story ideas for a show that will never exist. Um, per, uh, but then, but it has to be the, the ship itself that's causing the anomalies, or no? Or tied to it somehow, yeah. whatever, you can plenty any gobbledygook out of your ass. Well, I, I mean, you need it to make sense. Yeah, yeah. The time that the galaxy exists in currently is being changed. Mm -hmm. You could even have an episode, because it's projected, I think, that in the far, far, far future, the Andromeda galaxy will eventually collide. Oh my God, that's a fucking <laughs> awesome idea! That is a fucking awesome idea! <laughs> <laughs> like a big, a big star starts to appear. We see what happens to Starfleet in like a hundred thousand years. Are they still around? <laughs> Well, yeah. I was thinking more of a, the the physical change of the galaxy. Well, I'm just, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's like in a whole other episode too, though. I mean, you can do the episode with the Andromeda. You see Andromeda, then another episode where it's just we're a hundred thousand years in the future. What what's what's happened to Starfleet? Because I'm picturing a giant star just appearing in the middle of of some known civilization, <laughs> some uh, <laughs> some inhabited so, uh, star system. Jody, we need that warp drive. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, I'm thinking something like the 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 galaxy uh, is sort of like the zipper, mm -hmm. you know, that that's being that's pulling apart. Okay. And and they don't know it quite yet. Yeah. But eventually they do. That it's been it's been rigged to to cascade these events. There has to be somebody in charge of this. Yeah. Uh, where an ancient ancient civilization was going to die, but they figured out a way to come back. Perhaps the galaxy <laughs> like went through some kind of uh, time distortion and ended up there, and they, they used it as sort of like a Trojan horse, to, uh, as, a, as a tool, like they knew. I mean, it, it sounds a little extravagant, but you can, you can, you can whittle it down. You could whittle it down. There, if you, and if you go, if you like go into like the distant past of Star Trek, there's things you could revisit, you could dig out of the lore that would be fun to see. Yeah. You could, uh, do you remember the first Frankie episode with the, the ancient guardian of the planet? You could, you could work him in somehow. The empire is forever. Your empire fell prey to a supernova. Uh, do you remember like the, the, the time portal from the original series? The first humanoid race that all of the other races came about from, you could, you could... But what is the life of one race compared to the vast stretches of cosmic time? You could visit all of these different things if you really widen and, and jump around the Star Trek timeline. Don't forget the dinosaurs from Star Trek Voyager. Oh yeah, I'd like to. So then you'd have to come up with these options like, why don't we just blow up the galaxy, USS Galaxy, you know? And that's, hey, there's a giant bow on this package. Yeah, oh God, what is it? The, you, you said the, we're talking, we're sitting here talking the whole time about a galaxy-wide phenomenon. <laughs> and what's the name of the fucking ship? Jesus Christ! Yeah? This is one message on the computer. The galaxy is unraveling. I know the ship's really falling apart. They don't get it yet. They don't get the message left behind by the old crew just yet. Right. They only got fragments. But yeah, so so you want strong characters. You have you have a, a, a crew of cadets. Bring Barkley on board. Uh, it's Barkley's kid, who's like super competent and self-assured. <laughs> you can you can you can have the twist. <laughs> you should, shouldn't shouldn't you be worrying he's, about that? He's too overconfident. <laughs> <laughs> he's headstrong. Yeah, pick, uh, there's a cadet on board. Uh, Sam Barkley. Oh no. Oh, that's a, oh, great. Admiral Card, Sam Barkley. <laughs> At your service. Yeah, not what I expected. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as far as characters go, see that's why I kinda like the the three mains as Picard, Geordi, mm -hmm. and Dr. Leah Brahms. Because they're just like you don't want to dredge up everybody. You don't want to dredge up everybody, but I think for mains, it's you got to be Picard and Geordi, but you need at least one or two of the kids to be oh, yeah, a yeah, major yeah. character. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, you, I, you're looking at maybe seven or eight main yeah. characters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you bring up some of the, the cadets, the ones that have the best personality quirks or, or uh, skills. You know, obviously you'll, you'll need a, a, a helmsman. You'll need, um, there, might, there might even be like an engineering student that Geordi brings along yeah. to teach. It'll be a great opportunity to learn about uh, how an old warp drive works. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like the, the, those are the details. We're just talking big picture I stuff. I think, I think it's, yeah, if you have a, a, like a more of a science mystery than a, another, this is the race with the guns we need yeah. to take care of. I think that's a good thing if it's more science based with your mystery. An ancient race trying to transform the current state of the galaxy into what it used to be. Yeah. Kind of kind of like the uh the Voyager uh when the guy is uh, the dad from uh that 70s show is trying to <laughs> change the you know how yeah. time is yeah. in the blink of an eye. I had changed history itself. I'll help my people to thrive again. Um, something like that. Definitely where the ship is, th whoever is on the ship needs to be on the ship. And they're all kind of like connected to it in some way. Where it's, like I said, Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. But room for s standalone adventures, room for some good characterization, some good character stuff. And uh, kind of slow it down a bit. Overarching science mystery, 
Couple of, couple of fun moments. We get to bring back a Galaxy class ship. And Picard, uh, his character gets, instead of man in, in, uh, in tank top, ripping the spine of the Borg Queen out and breaking it in half. God. Um, he's, he's, a little, he's back to being thoughtful, Picard. I, yeah. Star Trek Galaxy, everyone. Like where the climax is a stirring speech and not a gunfight. Your race wants to live, but we are here too. And we've done great things. We've achieved peace in our time. And... Okay. 